welcome back, and uh, it's good to be home. Uh, for those of you out and uh, viewing this out there, I just got back from a week and a half long uh, trip to India. Today we're going to talk and we're going to finish up chapter number two of our Vahid book, and that is decoders and multiplexers. So here's the neat thing. All you have to do is identify decoder. Oh, look at this. When this is zero, zero, this output right here is one, zero, zero, zero. When this is one, zero, the output is zero, one, zero, zero. When this is zero, one, the output is zero, zero, one, zero. If this is one, one, so notice that only one of these outputs is one at any time. And when you have n inputs, you have two to the n outputs. And so if you looked at what was inside, you will have literally this, this operation. You will have your input 0 and 1. So you'll have 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And sometimes you will also have an enable bit go in. And so what I would like you to do right now is to write, turn to your neighbor and write what the truth table is for this functionality right here. So write, write the truth table for the functionality of this right here. Yes, sir? Um, the second goal it says two input decoder has four possible input. Oh, that would be four possible, oh, you know, it has a two input decoder has four possible input binary numbers. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And it has actually two to the n outputs of which it will only be one on any one of the digits. So it really only has four possible outputs. Oh, technically, adding this zero in here, this enable bit, has a fifth possible output, right? Because look, if E is one, then you have whatever the output is. If E enable is equal to zero, then it will be all zeros. So I want you to spend a little bit of time right now and create this, this, um, the truth table for this. Turn to your neighbor and do that. All right, so we have uh, some questions about this. So I asked you to take a look at this decoder that has an enable bit, all right? So the important thing to note is here we have a, a device here that now will rely on three inputs. So just so you understand what it is here, I'll redraw it on my paper before I... Uh, um, before I uh, show it on the screen. So here I have my decoder right here. And simply, if the E bit, the enable bit, means it is not enabled, everything will be zero on the output. Doesn't matter what you have on the input. This is very typical for a lot of different devices that have an enable bit that as long as there's a one on that enable bit, it will operate. If there's nothing on that bit, if there's a zero on that bit, then everything will be output of zero. Question, sir? Um, why do you have it starting with E, not like I, not I want? Ah, good question. Why E, right? Because very often when you have this, um, this table, they'll actually make it a little bit simply or simplify it. They might say E I1 I0 and then they'll say 0xx. Um, X. So what does X mean? Don't, Don't care. It doesn't matter what it is. It turns out that your output is going to be So 
So in this case, you would have zero, and it doesn't matter what those two are over there. Those would be zero, and that way they eliminated three lines from that input. Or, or three, I'm sorry, three lines from the truth table. And the reason why they might want to do that is it might have more than two inputs. It might have, you know, an enable and two inputs. It might have four inputs. And that just eliminates a lot of lines from that truth table. And then it would uh, continue on 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, with the 1, 1, 1, 1. So these are the same. Easy enough? Do you understand how this uh, device works? Yes, yes, yes. Now the important thing I want you to understand about this is that the enable, it turns on the function of the chip or the function of the device. Now I say chip because historically um, this device, this logic device, is a completely separate component, a separate chip, you know, with the little legs, the black, the, uh, the black body. Inside that, it's plastic. Inside the silicon that has the uh, functionality of this. So let's take again a look at an example of how you would use a decoder. So let's say you have a New Year's Eve countdown display. Isn't that exciting? You know, including the, uh, um, the dropping of the uh, ceremonial possum at midnight. See, <laughs> some of you are kind of furrowing your brow. And uh, it's not that far from here. There is a town, instead of dropping the... Uh, the golden or the uh, lighted apple, as in New York, or the, uh, the giant acorn in uh, Raleigh. Instead, they drop a possum that's in a cage. Is that Spivey Corner or something like that? I don't know where it is. You could look it up on Google. All right, so the microprocessor counts down, but the microprocessor provides a six-bit output. 2 to the 6th is 64, right? So what you have here is an enable. You have the six lines coming in that represent data. And then you would have 64 individual outputs and then you could hook each one of these up to an individual uh, light that would just light, 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 light as it goes up or down. And uh, notice that uh, this says D63. Why is that? All right, you have 64 different outputs. Remember, we start counting at zero. And you want to, uh, uh, oh, does this have an animation to show you? Oh, yeah, there we go. So here it is. You count down to two, one, zero. Woo, happy new year, woo, all right. Um, by the way, the one thing that's not shown here is the expectation that this would also have the digit one there on the enable. Now, here is another device that looks kind of similar, but it operates a little bit differently. And that is, instead of having, in this case, a low number of inputs and a high number of outputs, the multiplexer has a high number of out, uh, inputs 
and a low number of outputs. In other words, what you do is you control which one of these will be routed out. Now notice that if we're saying which one of these will be routed out, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be 1. It could be 0. So if we have a 4 input multiplexer, that means we choose I0 or I1 or I2 or I3. And which one of these we choose is depending on an input. So an input will determine which one of these we switch to the single output. So we have a device, and this is the best way to show it is here. Here's a really simple 2 to 1 multiplexer. You have this device that has an input here, I0. And you have this, which has an input of I1. And then you have D, which is your output. And S will select which one of the two you're going to use. So let's take a look at this input. If you have a 0 as the input, that means that whatever I0 is will be routed to D. It doesn't necessarily mean that D's output is going to be 1. It just means that D's output is going to be whatever I0 is. However, if you input a D, if you input a 1 on S0, that means then you'll route it this way. So if you have a 0 here as the input for S1, that means that you'll have an input on this AND gate of 0, and that one will never be selected. Well, what that means is that this will always be 0, no matter what this input is. But then take a look. Oh, the output on I0, if that output, or I'm sorry, the input I0, if this is 1, 1 and 1 is 1. Now, if you have a 4 by 1 multiplexer, that means that you will need two bits to select which one is going to be used. Let's see if we do a truth table on this. So I want a, to do a truth table for this. Do you want me to uh, do it, or do you want to try it? <laughs> do it. Do it now. I just watched on the plane the uh, Schwarzenegger movie, uh, with the, the, the most recent... Uh, uh, Terminator 1, right? I'll be back. So let's take a look at our truth table for decoder. Now this is where it gets really, really, really difficult. How many in this four by one multiplexer, how many different inputs do we have? 64, right? We have a total of four, I'm sorry, six inputs. That would just be downright nuts. So I'm going to make my truth table for the decoder a lot easier. And uh, let me write this, uh, this down over here so that when I show you, So S1 and S0 really stand for selection 1, selection 0. So I'm going to make this really easy. I'm just going to say D. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So when this is S1, S0, D is going to be what? I, I0. Whatever I0 is. 
Could be zero, could be one. So if this is zero, one, my output was going to be I1. In this case, it's I2. In this case, it's I3. There you go. Only four lines in this truth table. A lot easier than uh, doing 64 lines. Well, if I wanted to, I could have said S1, S0, I3, I2, I1, I0, D. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. The output is going to be 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. The output's going to be 1, correct? 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. The output is going to be 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. The output is going to be 1. Remember, what we're doing is, if we have in this case 0, 0, then it is just routing this over, no matter what any of these other things are. And so we're going to spend the rest of this table up to 16 inputs, just giving all the different combinations of things that really don't matter. So again, this is zero one zero one, and it really doesn't matter what for this situation, it doesn't matter what these are, does it? Because it all just matches whatever I zero is. And that is a multiplexer. Ah, did I call this a decoder? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> or simply a mux. And did I even say multiplexer or or? I can't remember. Good. All right, so you think you know how, how this works? Yes? So why would you use it? Let's see. Mayor switches. City mayor, city manager. This looks interesting. But I think there's a better example in here. is typically we use a multiplexer to uh, identify how we're going to choose one thing or another thing. Now, do you remember that adder we talked about last class, right? Wow, that was almost a week and a half ago, wasn't it? Where I should say Dr. Uh, Mandrakar actually covered that. Well, later on, you know, when you're feeding different things into an adder, and a multiplier and a subtractor. Very often what you want to do is you say, all right, do I want to use A or do I want to use B when I'm passing something in? And there's a reason for this. And one of the reasons that you may want to look at that is depending on if you want to add or multiply I'm sorry, add or subtract, you can use it for different types of things. Did he talk about how to increment and how to decrement? Hmm. So you know how an, ad an adder works, right? Yes? Uh, come on, you guys got to be more interactive than this. Do you know how an adder works? Yes. yes. Do you really know how, to, how an adder works? Yes, good enough? 
All right, let me give you a good example of what you might want to do. And why a multiplexer might be useful. So maybe you want A and B. And then you want out something. And this is going to be called my, ooh, I should put room up here for our class. And I'll call this my arithmetic and logic unit. And I'll put in uh, two lines over here. And I'll call these uh, S0 and S1. And what this tells me is I could do two different things. I can do a, uh, if I put in S with S1 and S0, I can say maybe if it's 0, 0, it means nothing. I'm not going to do anything. Or if, it, if I do this, then I want to do A plus B. Or if I do uh, 1, 0, I want to do A minus B. Or maybe if I do 1, 1, I want to say A plus 1. That's interesting. Why would I do an A plus 1? A what? To increment. How often do you see something like an increment? All the time. Because when you're doing loops, very often you just want to increment by one. So now, if we just looked at one of these, let's say this is uh, four bits, right? So now I have a choice. I can say, it looks like I'm always going to um, put something in, right? Or am I? Hmm. So maybe my, uh, my inputs here, this will be uh, A4, let me get this right, I'm just going to call this A, 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 and zero. So inside of here, I can do, I'm going to wipe this out a little bit. Inside of here, this could be inside in one part of it, that what am I going to choose for part of my my uh, calculation. And when I just say A here, what that means is that I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to either put in a, uh, uh, e there's going to be one of these multiplexers for A3, A2, A1, and A0. So just imagine there's just a whole bunch of these back here. Does that make sense? And then I'll have another one over here where we have S0 and S1. And so what are my inputs? Well, in this case, I'm going to say for this, this is 0, 0, 0, 0. This is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0. And in this choice, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. Remember, we have four of these. these I'm just showing you uh, one of them. This one would be B. 
and this one would be minus b. And then I choose which was the output because eventually then what I'm doing is I'm going to feed this into my adder. Now here is another aspect of this. We'll call this C. This represents four lines. This represents four lines. This represents four lines. This represents four, 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 four. Each one of these inputs is four into my logical box. So if you looked at each one of these individually, that would be expanded into, and this is probably where um, you're having a little bit of difficulty understanding this multiplexer. This would be A bit 3. This would be A bit 2. This would be A bit 1. This would be A bit 0. And it just so happens that we have three of those as inputs. And then, of course, you're switching each one of these with S0 and S1. And I'll put as D. So based on this entire arithmetic and logic unit design that I just presented. And then I showed you that this adder is made up of four of these multiplexers, choosing one part of it, each one of the individual bits. What I would like you to do is to show me what would these four multiplexers look like? So turn in a group of uh, uh, three or four because this might be a little bit more complex, right? And uh, should I make this a quiz? Why not? I pretty much show you what the answer is already, right? participation quiz, huh? So what do you want? Do you want a quiz or you? I like that. Somebody says, yeah, it's because don't forget, the more quizzes you get, the more we drop, right? All right, spend some time, work on it in groups of two or four, whichever one works out. Use a separate sheet of paper. I may or may not collect it. So let's take a look at this. Uh, I asked you to show me what's inside this black box right here, right? What will, or the black uh, circle. So what this is, is this represents some functionality. So let's look at what that functionality is. And this functionality is going to be four multiplexers sitting side by side. The 
the input for the four multiplexers, you have four things going in, right? We have two that you use for selecting, S0 and S1. Each one of these, S0, S1, S0, S1, and of course we have our output which is a D. Now the question is, what is the input associated with this? Well, I showed you the possible inputs are, depending on if you're selecting 0 or 1, is nothing, meaning all zeros. Or if your input is 0, 1, that means you want to add A and B. If the input is uh, 1, 0, then you want to say A minus B. And if it's 1, 1, then you want to say A plus 1. So that means that if this is, and again, looking back at our design of the multiplexer, the, uh, the different inputs were using their nomenclature I0, I1, I2, and I3. I0, I1, I2, and I3. So this is associated with this part right here will be associated with bit 3. This is associated with bit 2. This is associated with bit 1. And this is associated with bit 0. And all of these are going to go on at the exact same time. Does that make sense? All right. So what will the inputs be? Well, if we remember that if nothing goes on, if, if we have 0, 0, we want nothing to go on. That means that we want to make sure that our bits are 0 because 0 plus 0 is 0, right? Then I said A plus B. Well, we've already taken care of A, so let's look over here. B, that means that this is going to be B, but it's going to be bit 0 of B. This is going to be B, but it's bit 1. B, but this is the bit 2. And B, this is the bit 3. Now, what we want to go in this one is, oh, A minus B. So we'll want to put in here, I'm thinking a second. Tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a little change to my design here. I put minus B up here, but I think I'm just going to just call it B. And then in the adder, we're going to uh, worry about our addition or subtraction down there. So in this case, we have B0, B1, B2, and B3 is going to be fed down into our adder. And then f what's the final one? We're going to say A plus 1. So do we want to pass B through? No, no we want to pass the number 1. So this would be 1, 0, 0, 0. All of this, I said, is represented by a, a block that we kind of roll up. And each one of these inputs 
is four individual lines. You still have S0 and S1 here, and your output is also going to be four lines. That's D. So do you understand that this is one mux, right? You understand that, right? Is that yes? No? <laughs> Does everybody understand that this right here is one multiplexer? Yes. Yes, all right. All I'm saying is that I'm kind of rolling up this design into one single block, and it turns out that you have four input lines, four output lines, you know, I should say. You have each one of these wires here is four lines, and of course it has four inputs for each multiplexer. It's just that this is bit zero, bit one, bit two, bit three. So you're kind of stacking these together. Yes? Yes. So what I did down here with A is the same thing. I've taken these A's, or these, uh, these multiplexers, and put them in this design. So let me go back to my adder, or my ALU. So my ALU, again, is a big block, a big box, right? And this is my and this is my A and this is my B and it turns out that this is four muxes this is four muxes represented by one single um, one single block. And then these D's I'm then going to feed into another box which is an adder. Four wires, four wires, four wires, and actually, you can even consider it a, a bigger box like this, where notice I have some hardwired inputs of, in this case, 0, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 0, 1, or 0, 0, 0, 0, or I just pass B along. So maybe it would be worth it to say, what, uh, what does this really look like if we were to wire everything together. So let's do that. Since that needs to, it seems to be a, uh, a sticking point with a lot of you. So I have one box here with B and it's four wires, right? And so here is a typical a uh, drawing of what this would look like inside. What you would have is a very thick wire that would be inside of my uh, inside of my logical device and remember I had how many how many multiplexers? Four, right? So let's put those in. That is just downright ugly. I might want to draw that from scratch. Not 
sure that's better. So this is B, and it actually represents bits uh, B, bits 3, B bit 2, B bit 1, etc. What did we say the input for this first one is? Zero, B3, B3, zero, right? And so we would just put in zero. We would tie this up to here, but instead of a, a nice thick line over here, we would pull off bit three, bit three, and then we would input just zero here. Again, zero, we would call off or pull from this bit two, just bit two, and the value, oops, just zero. This is bit zero over here. And this is bit two here. Ah, one. Then this would all come together. And uh, just for fun, I'll call this D3, D2, D1, D0. This makes up D3 to 0, keeping in mind that this is a bus of 4. All of these will have an input of S0. And I'm not going to go and draw all the lines in here because it would make it really messy and confusing. So this is a interior uh, a view. of part of my design keeping in mind that what I just showed there we'll call this um, page 5 or detail on page 5 and then this is page 5. Make sense? Yes? Nobody's saying a word. Uh. So, for your quiz, separate sheet of paper. Okay, we'll take a quick vote. Do it in pairs or do it in four? Who says do it in pairs? Who says do it in fours? All right. Take out a sheet of paper and your quiz. Draw 
draw this box for the A inputs. Sound good? Go to it.